Hi, I'm hiding in my greenhouse because it's so windy outside today that you wouldn't be able to hear me speak with the wind whistling over the microphone. So, it's a pretty scary times and a lot of us find ourselves with more time on our hands than we quite anticipated and in need of a hobby. Um, so, um, I thought I'd um, show you how to identify bumblebees and maybe you could occupy a, a few happy hours hunting around in your back garden or your local park uh, for the different common bumblebee species and see if you can work out which one's which. So I'm going to take you on a, a bumblebee hunt of my garden. Uh, it's March, it's early spring, so the queen bumblebees have come out of hibernation. I've seen a few buzzing around. It's a great time of year to start uh, learning to identify bumblebees actually because there's only the queens on the wing. There aren't any workers, there aren't any males which can look different and later in the year also some of the bees start to get a bit kind of bleached and tired and bald and, and are harder to identify. So right now is the perfect time to take up a new hobby, Bumblebee ID. Uh, and so follow me on a, uh, uh, a trip around my garden. I'm going to use still photographs because I think they're probably easier to, you've got time to look at them rather than moving bees buzzing around. Uh, and we're hopefully going to find seven species of bumblebee, which includes all the common species that you're likely to find in your garden pretty much anywhere in the UK. It covers probably 99% of all the bumblebees you might ever come across. So if you, it's not, there's a couple of them are a bit tricky, as we'll see. Most of them are really easy. Um, so follow me and let's see what we can find. So. Let's have a look at this one. Who's this showing us her bottom? This is, appropriately enough, a red-tailed bumblebee. Bombus lapidarius is the Latin name. Hiding her head in a crocus, trying to drink the nectar. And there she is, turning round. So this is one of the easiest of our bumblebees to identify. Um, there are a couple of very rare species that can be confused with this, but if you see anything that's all black with a red bottom, you are almost certainly looking at a red-tailed bumblebee. They're really beautiful creatures. Off she goes, covered in pollen, and into the next flower. And here's a stop photo. I must admit, I haven't taken all of these photos today. I was cheated it slightly and substituted a, a few, and some of them are also uh, taken by friends and so on, so thank you to them. So here we go, this is a side view of a red-tailed bumblebee um, lovely big fat insects with a kind of nice neat fur. This one you can see that creamy blob on her hind leg, that's her, the pollen she's been collecting in this case from comfrey. Comfrey produces creamy coloured pollen as you can see. Okay, what have we got next? Another really easy to identify species. Again there are a couple of very rare ones but you'll never get them in your garden so don't worry about that. If you see a bee that is basically a kind of brownish colour all over, rather drab. I mean, they're, they're lovely, cute creatures, but not the most colourful of our bees. Um, then you're almost certainly looking at a common carder bumblebee, Bombus pascuorum. I really like these little chaps, um, but uh, as I say, not the most colourful. They have a, a slightly longer tongue than um, many of our other species, so they tend to visit slightly different flowers. They're, later in the year they're very keen on um, legumes, things like clovers and so on. You can see this, this bee here coming into land uh, with her tongue um, kind of unfurling, ready to drink the nectar. Okay, so there, number three, we move on to the buff-tailed bumblebee. Now this is the commonest bumblebee everywhere in Britain, in fact over most of Europe. It's also one of the biggest, um, so at this time of year a great number of the bumblebees you see around are buff-tailed bumblebees. What to look for, so they're big as I say, um, uh, they have two kind of golden yellow stripes, one just behind the head on the front of what's called the thorax, so Insect bodies have three parts. The head, which is here, is obviously on the right. 
And then the middle bit where the legs and the wings are attached, which is called the thorax. And then the back bit, which is the abdomen. So the buff tailed bumblebee has a stripe on the kind of collar at the front of the thorax. And then a similar coloured stripe at the front of the abdomen. And then her tail is a kind of um, off-white. Uh, so here's one. We can have a better look at her tail. It's variable a little bit. Sometimes it's quite brown. Other times it's just a sort of slightly dirty white. But uh, it's, it's, it's fairly distinctive in the queen. Um, as we'll discover later in the year, if you uh, come back for more punishment, there. We can't, when we go into more advanced bumblebee ID, uh, the workers of this species have a, a white tail, which makes life a bit tricky. Um, because it makes them easily confused with the, uh, the white-tailed bumblebee, which we'll see in a second. This is classic nest-searching behaviour in a, a young uh, queen buff-tailed bumblebee. So she's been hibernating all winter. She's trying to find a nice cavity to nest in. Typically, she'll be looking for a rodent burrow or some kind of nice a hole leading to a nice dry cavity underground. So she's just kind of flying about low to the ground, looking for holes and investigating. If she sees anywhere that might be a little dark hole she can crawl into, then in she goes. Usually, it's no luck and she comes out again pretty quick. But uh, who knows what she's found down there. Oh no, there she is, she's coming out again. Whether you can see her. There she goes. Hopefully she'll find somewhere to nest in the garden. Maybe even one of my about 15 bumblebee nest boxes, most of which never get used. So, then we have the white-tailed bumblebee. It's actually quite closely related to the buff-tailed bumblebee, and they are the two trickiest bumblebees to distinguish of our common ones. They, uh, but the picture I've got here, hopefully you can see the difference fairly clearly. So, there are two things to look for. The white-tailed bumblebee, firstly, has a completely white tail with no kind of um, grubby, buffish tinge to it at all. Um, and the, the stripes, the yellow stripes, are a bit brighter and paler. They're often described as being lemon yellow in the white-tailed bumblebee as opposed to golden yellow in the buff-tailed bumblebee. Rather handsome insects, not as common as the buff-tailed, but still widespread all over Britain and likely to turn up in your gardens. Very handsome. Okay, then if we move on, we have... Uh, the early bumblebee. Now the early bumblebee is the smallest of the common bumblebees. It's kind of, the sizes of bumblebees are somewhat confusing because um, within a species you get huge size variation. The queens are much bigger than the workers generally and even within the workers you get big ones and small ones. So size isn't a particularly useful guide to identification generally. But in the spring when there's only queens on the wing then it is useful. Um, because if you see any small bumblebee flying around in March, then it's a, that's a pretty good clue that it might be the early bumblebee. The name early bumblebee um, is, is slightly misleading. They don't emerge from hibernation earlier than other species. Uh, it's actually because the nests finish much earlier than other species. Um, in, in May and June, this species f fizzles out for the year, so you don't see them later than that in, in high summer. Anyway, so one of my favourites, the early bumblebee, Bombus pratorum is its Latin name. Um, two yellow stripes and uh, a little reddish bottom. Um, could be confused with a queen buff tail, although they tend to be much smaller, and the bottom is um, a brighter red rather than buff brown. Um, so yellow stripe behind the head on the collar, yellow stripe at the front of the abdomen, and a smallish red bottom and that tells you you're looking at uh, an early bumblebee okay so then we move on 
to this rather handsome beast. This is common name is the garden bumblebee, which isn't much help because you're probably looking for all of these bees in your garden. Um, the garden bumblebee is an interesting beast. It has the longest tongue of any British bumblebee, or at least of any apart from uh, one of the very rare species. Uh, which means it tends to visit different flowers. You'll find it visiting flowers that hide the nectar at the end of a deep tube, things like foxgloves later in the year. And red clover is one of its favorites, which also has very long, deep tubular flowers, comfrey too. So to identify a garden bumblebee, what you need to look for is there are three yellow stripes and a white tail. So it has a, 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 a yellow stripe in a place we haven't seen so far, um, at the, the back of the thorax. So if we look at this picture here, you can see there's a yellow collar, a yellow stripe behind the head, which is common to several other species. And then moving back down the body at the back of the thorax, there is a distinct yellow stripe, and then another one on the front of the abdomen, and then a white tail. And also the faces of these insects are kind of elongate. They're sometimes described as being horsey faced. Um, uh, which is, relates to their adaptation to feeding on deep flowers. Um, I think these are rather beautiful. Look at them. Here's one with its tongue unfurled, coming into land on some oilseed ray. Beautiful insects. Okay, so now we just have one to go. And actually, I've probably saved one of the easiest bumblebees till last. And this is a newcomer. This is the tree bumblebee, Bombus hypnorum. Uh, it wasn't discovered in Britain until 2001. It invaded from France and completely by chance, I was the first person to catch one uh, on the edge of the new forest. But since then, it's spread all over Britain and become very common in gardens. It's called the tree bumblebee because it likes to nest in trees rather than underground where most uh, bumblebees nest. Uh, and it particularly likes to nest in tip boxes, which is probably part of the reason for its success, because there are so many tip boxes in our gardens. And this species, the queens, will even oust blue tits from a nest, even though they're much, much bigger than her. Uh, they seem to be frightened, perhaps because of the sting. Anyway, the tree bumblebee has a very distinctive colour pattern. It has uh, a kind of chestnutty brown thorax, rather similar in colour, perhaps, to the common carder. Um, but the common carder is brown all over. The, the tree bumblebee has a, a, a brown thorax and then a black abdomen with a white tip. And there's no other bumblebee in Europe that's remotely similar to that. So it's pretty, pretty easy to spot a, a tree bumblebee if you get a good look at it. Lovely creatures. Long may they thrive in their new home. So there you have it. The, the big seven bumblebees, as it were. Um, Try it yourself. Go out, see what you can find, see if you can work out which one's which. I'll be back in a month or two with um, a more advanced uh, a Bumblebee ID course. We'll try and cover some of the trickier, slightly rarer species uh, for those of you that fancy a challenge. But first things first, see if you can identify uh, the bees that you find in your garden. Good luck. Have fun.